That's a very long time. Oh, I guess we're starting. <laughs> <laughs> you waved your hand. Oh, man. So the last few days, weeks, almost a month. If it were February, it'd be a full month. The last 28 days have been interesting, to say the least. Mm -hmm. And uh, not just from the standpoint of Tucker Carlson being fired from Fox, which is before he got fired. And I want to go into YouTubers and their revenue and their ad revenue and their reach and their um, suppression also and their shadow banning. But first, I want to talk about Tucker Carlson Okay. and how I'm not going to lie. Maybe maybe I even voiced this out loud. But as soon as they agreed to settle, as soon as Fox agreed to settle, and I think I might actually have this on a video that I posted around that time. As soon as Fox agreed to settle for $780 million ish, I said that um, they were trying to silence themselves mm -hmm. because ultimately their settlement avoided testifying. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I bet you. That if you put uh, these employees, these anchors, these the personnel on the stand mm -hmm. under oath, mm -hmm. Fox News would be exposed. Yes, I was doing my job, mm -hmm. but my job, as instructed by my superior, my boss, my pro producer, maybe not so much because Tucker and his producer left, mm -hmm. or. Tucker got fired, the producer left with him. Yeah. But whoever was in charge was like, we're going to need you to say this. Mm -hmm. Which he's already pointed out that, uh, granted, Fox News didn't do it, but other media outlets were persuaded mm -hmm. by pharmaceutical advertiser dollars. Oh, yeah. I mean, they spend a lot of money. They probably spend more money than any other advertisers out there, besides probably alcohol and cigarettes. And now they're saying there's these, these text messages. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what's going on. I'm not there. Um, there's always three sides to every story, your side, their side, and the truth. Mm -hmm. But that's what's most important here, is the truth. And I will say that at this point in time, that's going to be hard to figure out and find. For instance, uh, you have to understand what the truth is. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is that there is no spoon. And it's not the spoon that you're trying to bend, but it's your mind. Mm -hmm. Because even if the truth came out... And it was that, okay, let's just say the truth came out and uh, there was collusion within the government um, on both sides to ultimately launder money out of the people's hands, out of taxpayers' dollars, uh, through various routes, directions, um, bills, proposals, construction projects, whatever you want to call it. Mm hmm uh, military aid, and uh, it just went back to big corporations, businesses, politicians. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. Now what are you going to do? The truth is there is no spoon. So it's like now that you know the truth and you know that that's what they do and they're going to keep doing it, mm -hmm. the new truth is that everything was a lie. Mm -hmm. That's the new truth. Yeah. So can we ever really get to the truth because whoever's telling it to you could be lying. Mm -hmm. I could be lying. Mm -hmm. But whatever I tell you that's true may not necessarily work with the lies that everyone else is pushing. Mm -hmm. But also a lot of times people don't want to hear certain truths. They'd rather hear lies because it's easier to digest. So you have that as well. But then also a lot of people hear truths, hear lies, and mishear Can't. 
both. I was about saying can't discern which one is which either. And the miss here. Yeah, that one also. For instance, a comment came through on your video and says that Stephen Gardner donates all of his money mm -hmm. to his giveaways. Subscribers. Yeah, giveaways. And that's entirely not true. That's it was never said. said mm -mm. It was misheard. Mm -hmm. It was misheard. So then when that person says it, are they lying? To them, they are not. To those who heard it correctly, they are. So it just depends. I think it just depends. Now, I don't know if this, you know, speaking of the interview I did with Stephen Gardner, um, Marvin left a comment here that I thought was like really interesting. And it has to do with hearing things you don't want to hear. And I don't, are you okay if I read this comment? Sure. Okay. He says, this is on the interview. He says, you did a great job and I enjoyed that immensely. So I'm, I don't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry, but somebody left a comment on our video collab yesterday where mm -hmm. we were going all in on mm -hmm. cash limitations, cash restrictions, CBDC. Mm -hmm. And they said this would have been great if you would have left out the political part. How can you leave out the political part when the political part is what's pushing the agenda? Well, more so, let me just read it back. Um, I'll just read it. Please just quit this. Um, Oh, wait, no, that was a different. <laughs> that's, different ending. That was a different <laughs> shitty cop. Um, I just want to read this because I want it to be accurate because I want people to understand, and it ties into what you're about to share. Okay. I don't know what you're about to share, but I can promise you it will tie into it. Will. it. And let me <laughs> scroll through here. And it's actually, it's not hard to find because... I don't have that many comments because YouTube is suppressing my content. If you hit newest, it'll show up that the person replied to your reply. So it says, Kevin, the political portion should be removed from the topic. It takes away from your flavor. Oh, I didn't know you were tasting me like that. But either way, <laughs> my reply was not. Nah, the channel is called Kevin for a reason. It re it's really hard to argue with the facts glossing over how our economy is extremely politicized as well as our freedom of speech would be doing a disservice to all the viewers this is life man up but what's most important here is that this channel is called kevin for a reason mm -hmm. it's my channel i do what i want until the platform shuts me down i do what i want and uh therefore you can share whatever you want because i'm pretty sure you're never going to share anything that i don't want on the channel uh Otherwise, you wouldn't be on the channel. <laughs> so, uh, proceed. All right. So, Marvin says, you did a great job, and I enjoyed that immensely. For the most part, I am put off by anything climate-related. We talked about climate change and Robert um, uh, F. Kennedy Jr. and his climate background, and now he's going to run for president and whatever else. He says, after listening to climate change news for what seems like forever, I automatically put up a wall and look at it as unreasonable and extreme. And because of that... I've become unreasonable and extreme myself without realizing it until this present moment. I was feeling very negative in the beginning of this interview and only stayed because of my respect for Squirrel Tribe. I closely watched your reactions to what was said and because your reactions didn't seem to be all one-sided, I began to let my guard down and tried to be objective. That in itself is an impressive accomplishment. It put me in a more neutral attitude and I digested the rest of the interview a little easier. Still feeling unsettled because of the content, I continue contemplating my own reasoning. Thinking for oneself should not be this hard. We've been bombarded with extremes for so long that we automatically take sides without even listening. That has to change. I plan on trying to be a better listener from here on and not let prejudices sway my thinking. It will be hard to undo what has taken years to put in place, but one has to start somewhere. I still have my opinions and beliefs, and many of those will not be dislodged at any point. I will still speak up, but I will listen in return. This is hard for me to take in, but if the world has to change, I should be willing to change also to a point. Still holding on to my ideals, but willing to listen. After all, it's the neighborly thing to do. Thanks, neighbor. Well, I mean, honestly, if we're going to choose sides, mm -hmm. I think we should choose sides. And the side that we should all choose is for truth and good. Yes. If you're going to choose a side, truth and good, like that's it. And, but, and what people need to remember is that side of truth and good can come from all directions. You just have to be willing to see it from all directions, not cut off your sight to this one direction because you don't agree with some of the things. Or you think you won't agree 
Yes. Which is how it started off, where he was almost not going to watch it. Mm -hmm. So I replied back and I said, as I always tell my daughter, you can't decide something till you know the whole story. And that means hearing all sides. It's easy to make quick decisions and stick with those. But growth happens when you're able and willing to hear the things that make you question your quick decision and decide from there if you keep your same point of view or tweak it. I personally am grateful to people like Marvin who are willing and able to listen, even if it doesn't immediately fall into your viewpoint. I myself do not agree with everything, but would rather be open to listening and potentially learning than not. Speaking of listening, I'm hearing the guy walk upstairs. Yes. So he didn't die. He didn't die. Also, did go knock on the door yesterday. Nobody answered. But then there's not really much you can do. Email the apartment complex and just say, hey, listen, this is we heard this loud noise. I don't know for sure what's happening. Just wanted to put it out there. But then the immediate relief I felt when I saw this man walking back home uh, yesterday afternoon, I was like, oh, OK, <laughs> breathe. He's fine. <laughs> he didn't die. So uh, I, too, am guilty of having my blockers on, my shielders on. And Patrick Humphrey responded. He, he left a comment on my video. Mm -hmm. So through vidIQ, I can see it's really his channel mm -hmm. and not a spam. Yeah. Because it shows how many subscribers next to the account. And then he emailed me and he goes, hey, sorry about that, man. I swear it's me and I'm not scamming you or <laughs> want you to come to Nevada. Uh, crying, laughing emoji face. I'm honestly just terrible, terrible at networking. So please forgive me. This is my YouTube login email, not my contact one, which is filled with spam and is barely readable. That was 100% me texting you from the Florida number. Sorry for the confusion and sketchiness. For which I replied, thanks for clearing that up. Sorry, but YouTube got me all paranoid over here wearing my tinfoil hat, LOL. <laughs> Let's get something on the calendar soon for a collab. And unfortunately, that is where we go. Mm -hmm. based on where we've been and how we've been conditioned and trained and um, brainwashed by the media, by other people, by, you know, paranoia uh, as a result of the media and other people uh, and uncertainty, you know, um, wild and crazy shit that's going on in this country and around the world. Like, so sometimes you really need to step back and be like, hang on, mm -hmm. let me try to reset. Yes. And be super uh, uninfluenced and extremely non-biased and just, just be. Which I think is a good time to start talking about YouTube and this reset. Which I almost want to ask YouTube to just reset my channel. Could you just... But I don't. Yeah. Because... I do want it to be natural and organic. Mm -hmm. Well, I already said start a brand new one, different email address, everything else, and put up your last video. Take your last video down from this channel, put it up on a new one, and see if it gets served. I think it's your specific channel that is having the issues, not the content. I think your channel got noticed, and they were like, mm-mm. I don't believe that's true. Okay. I just, I just, I got so many things in my head from all the other channels that I have and mm -hmm. I work with and, and and I evaluate and but those didn't get the strikes that this one did because of the project veritas thing. I did I don't have a strike. What was it? This is a different channel. It's not this channel. It wasn't the main channel. Shit, no, I put that on here. I put that on a different channel. I thought it was on this I put it on a different channel. On this channel I said the video exists. Uh -huh. I put the full video on the other channel cuz I'm not stupid. Oh, so this channel never had no. the community anything. No. Oh, well, then my mind is completely changed on everything. Yeah. I thought the entire time that it was this channel, and that's why these things were happening because no. of that. No, and that channel, that channel can grow. I know it can. I just don't mess with it because mm -hmm. I don't really want to do this again. Okay. I'm working on the car channel. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if anything, I'm going to work on the car channel. I'm not going to do this again. But... Um, I, I almost want to ask YouTube to reset it, but I don't really want to because that's unfair. Mm -hmm. um, although they'll tell you that there's nothing they can do, we know that that's not true. But I would rather just, it's almost like getting sick, uh, which again, when the kid wakes up, she's got to drink this watermelon. Well, I have to take her temperature first, see what it's at, but then she has to drink this cold-pressed watermelon juice because watermelon has 
really good nutrients and things in it and it's really like healthy so what illness is my opinion is it is what it is let it run its course when it's done i'll be better for it mm-hmm. stronger for it my body has built up this um fight and this new immunity to this illness mm-hmm. and i feel like this is the same way here um but i don't know if other youtubers are going to look at it the same way as they begin to look at their last 28 days mm-hmm. if you're not aware youtube um, automatically as default set your time frame up all your analytics all your data based on the last 28 days if there's extreme consistency every day looks the same mm-hmm. because it's based on the last 28 days mm-hmm. but if there's any major disruption positive or negative then the numbers start to change based on the last 28 days mm-hmm. so if you make 50 dollars every single day um it'll always look the same mm-hmm. you know so um just as a quick explanation without showing you screenshots and doing b-roll because we're not doing it this is podcast style format where people can actually just listen to this content and hopefully absorb the information being shared but we're still trying to figure out why why over the last 28 days or maybe even slightly longer than that has there been such a drastic change and when i see things happening like what happened with tucker carlson and the truth being withheld and silenced Mm -hmm. i'm like does this have anything to do with youtube content creation but then i see channels like kara and nate and i feel like they're getting gypped yes i agree and they're not necessarily truth and you know conspiracy theory and like they're just great enjoyable travel Mm -hmm. vlog content that they go above and beyond to create What's interesting is I, you said the last 28 days, so I went and looked at my last 28 days, and it shows me everything in bright green. Everything looks great, except for subscribers. It's like a normal green. It says, I gained 6,500 in the last 28 days, but my views, it says they're 196,000 more than normal. My watch time hours, 113,000 more than normal, and my revenue more than normal So in, in the last 28 days. But I went back to March, which is the 28 days before that, and... I had way more views, way more watch hours, way more subscribers, and way more revenue than I did in the last 28 days. So what so, is it so basing So you're still off doing of? good. I'm still doing good, but... But you were doing great, and I then all doing, of a sudden they're like, you're going to do good. So does that mean let's, let's look 28 like days from now you're going to be... <laughs> so March, I had, I, was, I had 2.9 million views in March. So far for April, I have 1.5 million views. So I have half the views in this month than i did last month did youtube lose half the viewers i don't know where they went (laughs) it doesn't make sense it does not make sense and the other thing that doesn't make sense is how little money you're going to make zach king according to tube filter got 196 million views during the first month of youtube shorts ads where youtube will pay content creators a revenue split similar to long form content although youtube takes a bigger chunk for shorts that take 55 percent 196 million views so let's just say for argument's sake let's just last march let's do march Mm -hmm. march you had 2.9 million views Uh uh-huh You know what's funny? If I look at last 28 days, everything is green. But if I look at April, everything is gray down arrows. (laughs) Because it has one day of March in there. So it makes it jump up. Yeah, so once the next day rolls over, Uh the next 28. Yep. So how much did you make for March? You want the total? Yeah. $86. Let's just say $1,000. Okay. For March. Mm Mm-hmm. Divided by 31. 2.0. Oh, views. Yeah, 2.9. Uh, 2, 9, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 9, boom. Count out all the zeros. Um, so that's a penny per view. Okay. Penny per view. Mm-hmm. So this is not how YouTube calculates it. YouTube calculates yeah. it by per thousand. 
Um, but we're going to go penny per view for simple, easy math. Okay. All right. And Zach King had 196 million views. So he should have made 196, no, $1.96 million? Yes. He should have made $1,960,000. You know mm -hmm. how much he made? <laughs> Not that. $2,918. And what's crazy is they're pushing shorts. And I, I say they're trying to spend less money. $2,918. So March 1 marked the one-month anniversary of YouTube Shorts ads. With 30 days of data under their belts, several creators are answering the million-dollar question, how big are shorts payouts? And the answer not that big. Microscopic compared to views. At least for now, so they say. Zach King, a vertical video veteran who first broke out on Vine before expanding to platforms like TikTok and YouTube, collected 196.4 million shorts views during February. That traffic translated to $2,918.10 of ad revenue, which means that King's shorts made less than two cents for every thousand views they received. You made a penny per view. Mm -hmm. He made less than two pennies per thousand views. That's crazy. Well, I mean, I have shorts on my channel, and all my shorts, I think last month, equaled like 80,000 views. I made $1.95. Other creators reported slightly higher earnings. A channel owner who goes by the moniker Space God made about four cents per thousand shorts views in February. Oh, yeah. And Rio, or Rilo, R I L. L O, I don't know if you say English or Spanish. A former NASA engineer pulled in about five cents per thousand views on his tech videos. As short form becomes more and more dominant in that space, it just feels like we should be able to make a living as short form creators, Rilo said in a Twitter video. He is hoping to see an ecosystem in which creators are not forced into making long form video just because that's the only way to make money. And Equally, I hope that, you know, creators are not forced into making short form video because I prefer long form. Mm -hmm. I really like long form. Um, I would imagine people who grew up on Instagram reels and grew up on TikTok shorts and who grew up on Snapchat won't like long form. Probably. They don't have the attention span and for it. I don't like that stuff. I don't. I don't no, like we it. don't do the reels and the TikTok like stuff. Now, granted, it's, it's quick, super fast and easy on the car channel and it does produce i could take a short for 10 seconds of a car and pick up way more subs than i could making a 20 minute video it's just that simple it's just that easy and I also don't need to make a 20 minute video about a 10 second short like mm -hmm. it should just be 10 seconds there you go. check out this car yeah pretty cool um which i was supposed to do this weekend but it looks like the rain is going to be I may awful. still do it. They'll just be all wet. <laughs> well, I mean, we still have to do it. We have rain jackets for a reason. Um, but either way, uh, it says here that King expressed a more positive outlook. The man known for employing uh, inventive special effects agreed that a lot of creators may be disappointed with paltry February payouts. But he clarified that the amount he made from YouTube shorts was about twice as much as his TikTok earnings and far superior to his Reels monetization. And during his four years of activity on Vine, his short form clips didn't accrue any ad revenue at all. With that being said, I feel like YouTube is intentionally uh, shortchanging creators because, no intended. because they are paying them more than uh -huh. they would get at TikTok or someplace else, but extremely less than they would get making long form content. But for the people who only want the short form, it makes sense. It it does, and I think YouTube is banking heavily on TikTok being banned in the United States. Um, so that's what they want. It says when I look at almost 197 million views in a month, that amount he made from YouTube Shorts was about twice as much. Uh, yeah, and it says yeah. And when I look at almost 197 million views in a month, I don't look at the payout I get from the platform. I look at exposure and what my CPM and costs were to the, get those views. Right now, it's extremely low cost when compared.
comparing to the exposure, which is why it's not about the payout. It's about brand building. Mm -hmm. My guess is YouTube monetization will slowly go up over the years and favor creators, but exposure in numbers like this will be more difficult to achieve. Mm -hmm. YouTube Shorts monetization is still in its early stages, so creators plagued by poor payouts shouldn't panic just yet. At the very least, the short form hub is providing immense viewership and exposure. According to our latest global top 50 ranking, 33 of the 50 most watched YouTube channels in the world operate primarily on shorts. And that can work. And I'm going to put shorts in the category of the lost leader. You're going to spend time, effort, energy, money creating these shorts. You're not going to get much back in return in form of revenue, but it would be a lost leader as it continuously builds your channel, builds your subscriber count, builds your audience, builds your brand. All those subscriber counts don't matter anymore. Supposedly. Supposedly. Did you say supposedly? No, I would never. They say subscriber counts don't matter anymore. But I will say that for the creators, um, I do think that this is indicative of the future of the platform and how they are going to get more creative in paying less. Mm -hmm. Paying less and in turn offering you uh, more. And, oh, we're helping you get gain exposure, but we're not going to pay you for it. Mm -hmm. Much like they run ads on creators' channels that aren't monetized and they don't pay them for it. Even if you get demonetized, they'll still run ads. They just won't pay you for them. So it's not like they don't like the content making ad revenue. They just don't want the creator making ad revenue. Do you think there's less advertisers right now spending money and that's why YouTube is trying to pull away from the long form that pays out the most because they want to keep their profits in the margins they've been in over the pandemic? Uh, I would be willing to bet that there's probably a retraction in ad spend. Um, we, there's no doubt that we are entering into a recession. Mm -hmm. Um, but it also means that, you know, it doesn't mean that you stop advertising. No. So, uh, if anything, they could still produce the same amount of views. They could just change the, the, the cost of the ads to bring in the advertisers and make it up in volume. Um, but based on the numbers that I see and what's happening and not just on this channel, because I have access to multiple channels, there's something weird going on. Mm -hmm. There's something weird going on. What's interesting to me is that YouTube doesn't want there to be links to take them from the platform, yet in the setup for your YouTube account, your channel, it gives you areas to put in your Instagram, your Facebook, your Twitter, your other things like that, that literally takes them away from the platform. I also think that YouTube has employed a, um, um, like almost like a restrictor on subscribers. I could I could see that. Um, I cannot, especially when you have your the people like I, the names I do recognize commenting. When it's a brand new person I've never seen in my life before, I take everything they say with a grain of salt. But when it's normal people that I've seen commenting and they say I had to resubscribe to you, it said I was unsubscribed. I never unsubscribed, or the I didn't get a notification and I have notifications turned on for you. Like if I look at my channel. It says that most channels get between 15 to 30 percent of their subscribers to hit notifications. I'm at like 29 percent of mine have notifications turned on. And then it shows you that all of 5 to 15 percent, once they get that notification, will turn around and watch the video. Mine shows that it's like at 14 percent. Once it's no they get a notification, they'll click it and watch the video. Yet if I look at my views from notifications in the beginning, it's very small. And then people are going, I didn't get notified. So, so none of the math, maths, basically. So there's a channel out there that's killing it. And his last few videos have gotten multiple millions of views. But his subscriber count doesn't go up. And I'm wondering, and my subscriber count has done some weird stuff. But I almost wonder if YouTube has said, this is your subscriber count and it's going to stay that way. Mm -hmm. You're going to gain some subscribers. We're not going to count them. And you're going to lose some subscribers that didn't unsubscribe. We're just going to unsubscribe them from mm -hmm. you because we're, you're just going to stay in this range, Wrong. this yeah. bubble. Uh -huh. 
So if I look at vidIQ, I can look at your channel and say that over the last 28 days, your subscriber count has gone up 4.9%. From what? Because the month before that, my subscriber count was ridiculous. I don't care what it was, okay? I'm going to show you what it says here. Okay. That over the last 28 days, your subscriber count grew 4.9%. However, over the last 14 days, your subscriber count grew 0.8%. Mm -hmm. And over the last seven days, 0%. Even though I literally gained about um, it's not, 100 it's subs not yesterday. Less than one. Like it can't mm -hmm. register. It doesn't go that, that far out sense. in the decimal. How all of a sudden are you gaining so few subscribers? Because my videos aren't being pushed. Why? What has changed? I'm not talking about East Palestine the way I was, and maybe they don't need eyes diverted to something else right now. Or maybe you were providing too much truth. I feel like that's probably the case. They didn't like the dot connecting between the things and the companies that I was talking about. Redacted has 1.87 million subscribers. 1.87 million. Mm -hmm. You would think that they know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Six days ago, they put up a video that got 71,000 views. That's less than half a percent mm -hmm. as far as views to subscriber count ratio. But it was a video about uh, exposing the truth behind Facebook, mm -hmm. which YouTube and Facebook are completely different platforms. You so would think that they'd want that shown. Yeah, don't go to Facebook for your stuff. Come over here. We've got the good cookies. <laughs> Interestingly enough, there is a little bit of a pattern here that any thumbnail that they have that they use as censored block mm -hmm. doesn't get any views. That's why my thumbnail is literally just a screenshot from my video and I throw a couple words on there and call it done. I may go back to no words and see what happens. Well, folks, um, I think there's also... Um, a reduction in reach, recommended and suggested impressions. Click-through rates don't matter. They really don't. Mm -mm. Because your click-through rate, when they show you a click-through rate, it's based off of their impressions, not your actual subscribers or anything like that. So if they've given it 10 impressions and five people have watched it, you're going to have a 50% click-through rate. And you're going to be like, yes, this is great. No, you had five views from that. Those two things they're they're like fluffer numbers in in my opinion interesting i'm going to continue to monitor it um but i do think that something's going on mm -hmm. um i've never been so far off for so long yeah never and also one of the other channels that i work on um we were able to produce three or four one out of tens last week mm -hmm. So I'm not that far off mm -hmm. on that channel, right? Mm -hmm. We were able to produce three or four one out of tens last week. Yeah. And I believe that he's now back on track on doing it himself. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like I'm pretty good at this. Hell, we did a one out of ten last night. Mm -hmm. But mine and his don't gain subscribers. Mm -mm. Which is really weird. Don't gain hours like we were able to do it, mm -hmm. but then every other metric tied to it doesn't add up. This is why now at the end, my end screen, I've added in the one that has the subscribe. I've never done it before because I never, I, I never ask people to like the video. I never ask people to subscribe because uh, it, that's not why I'm on there. Like the likes and the subscriptions help for a view and push and stuff like that. But when I'm talking, I'm, I'm focused on what I'm doing and I never, I never think about it. So at the end, my end screen, what I've started doing is putting in that little subscribe button right in the middle because maybe that's what's needed. Well, here's the deal. Um, based on my research, the videos, if you look back in history on your channel uh -huh. that have grown the most subscribers, uh -huh. if you watch them, you never tell anybody to subscribe. Yeah. You, ne you never. I mean, I, I've never. I'm, I'm maybe like three videos out of how many hundreds that you don't, I have. You don't. You don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't. 
So it was unnecessary. Yeah. People were going to organically and naturally subscribe because they wanted to. You didn't mm-hmm. have to tell them. Yeah. YouTube is not that new where people don't know what to do. Like, it's simple. It's easy. Mm-hmm. Um, so the only thing that really makes sense is that there is an automatic suppression built in to lock channels into specific ranges of subscribers or percentages of sub- subscriber growth, mm-hmm. which normally you could pull out, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of subscribers on a viral video, now it's going to be throttled. Mm -hmm. Where you still get them, but they don't register. Well, I mean, I have a video that's got like 800,000 views and it gained me 3,000 subs. And that's it. And that's weird. Because I have videos where I have 600,000 views and it gained me 15,000 subs. But that video came before the other. So I'm not quite sure what is happening or how it's going. But honestly... Look, this is where it's gonna sound messed up. I don't, I don't care. I'm still gonna make my videos because no, it's still... neither do I. I'm just, I'm just interested. Oh yeah, in, I'm in definitely the interested in it. But <clears throat> at the end of the day, I still want to be the voice out there. I'm gonna say for the people, which I know sounds cheesy and cliche or whatever else, but there needs to be people who are willing to still speak the truth despite whatever's thrown in their way to hinder them, stop them, make them want to change course, any of that other stuff, because. If you don't have that, then it. What do you have left? You know. I got. I got to bring up one more because I'm. A, I'm a little curious about what happened. Okay, I got to text this child to see how she's doing because since she's awake now. Um. So Morris Invest is the second channel, sort of, of Redacted. <clears throat> it now has 125,000 subscribers. Three weeks ago, it got a video with 7.2 million views. But since then, the views have just tanked. And I find it really hard to believe. The video before the 7.2 million, 589,000. Before that, 752,000. Two videos before that, 649,000. 368, 1.1 million. I feel as though they have a pretty good sense of how to do this. And all of a sudden, 20,000 views. 9,000 views, 10,000 views. Like, really? Like, really? None of it makes sense right now. None of it makes sense. Like, you you fell off that hard in a week? Like, you completely lost track of how to do this? No. Now, also, YouTube on the back end is showing that the audience view times are different, which then is almost like, wait, so you're telling me that nobody's watching YouTube on Friday and Saturday Yeah, anymore? also doesn't make like, sense. But maybe this is true. Maybe people have devoted their time and energy elsewhere uh, because they have to, mm-hmm. and they don't have time to watch. They're working two, three, or four jobs mm-hmm. just to uh, get by. Now, I do get those people who say, your videos are too long. I need them to be shorter. And I understand that there are people out there who don't have the time to watch a 30 minute video. I do want to point out that you can see how long the video is before you ever start it. And there is a pause button for a reason. And you do have the ability to just listen instead of watch all these other things. But I think that the impatience of some people and the fact that YouTube wants to push the shorts has a lot to do with long content creators like yourself and me having fewer views. But you know, at the end of the day, I take the fewer views for the, what they pay in comparison to the unbelievable viral pops of hundreds of millions of views in shorts mm-hmm. that don't pay. That don't pay. Um, now, granted, there are some ways of which that we've already discovered and tested and, and uh, executed on where you can actually make short content pay way more. A few other creators are doing it. I'm not going to leak that secret here, but I don't think it is 100% fair for those who have figured it out, nor do I want to be the cause of overly saturating this strategy and technique, thus rendering it useless. Um, so I'm not going to expose that. That's just not fair, mm-hmm. in my opinion. But there are ways that you can make shorts pay way more. Oh, yes, I agree. And we've, we've done it. Like mm-hmm. We've seen it happen. We've done it. Um, we're doing it. And um, this can also still work in conjunction with the exposure and building your brand and things like that. Mm -hmm. Either way, uh, love to get you guys' take on this. Any, every, and all of what we talked about. 
Um, drop a comment down below. Let me know. Uh, you guys already know. More videos to come. Yes. <laughs> Y'all take care. Be safe. See Bye. you real soon. Maybe this thing's connected. There it is.